In this video, we're going to perform the indicated operations and simplify the result. So we have some rational expressions to combine. 2 over x minus 2 over x minus 1 plus 3 over x minus 1 squared. So if you want to try it, go ahead and pause the video and then I'll come back. Okay, before we continue, let me just go over a few things that hopefully you already know. But generally when we add or subtract fractions, whether they're rational expressions or numerical fractions, we need to find the same or find the common denominator, lowest common denominator, or at least common multiple, and write every expression, fractional expression, with the same denominator. Then we just add the add or subtract the numerators. Now when I was working on my undergraduate degree, all math majors had to take a very basic course that involved basically procedures. So it was arithmetic. So they went through multiplication of whole numbers, decimals, uh, fractions, and so forth. But you had to follow the procedures. It didn't matter if you got the answer correctly. It didn't matter if you got the answer correct. If you didn't follow the procedure, you would lose some credit, at least half credit for, for the problem. So it's essential to follow the procedure. So here's, I can remember this. I want to go through that procedure and work in these problems. So here's what they said. Step number one said put it equals after the problem. So in this case, we have it there. And then take every denominator and factor it. You have to show your work on this. So you couldn't just get, even if you had something as basic as one and a half plus one third, you had to, you had to show the procedure. So you're supposed to factor the denominators. So if you did, and, and actually we started with arithmetic before we got into the algebra. The first half of the uh, semester was all arithmetic. So here was the procedure. Take each denominator and prime factor it. So 6 would be prime factor into 2 times 3, or be 2 times 2. You could write that as 2 squared. 18, you can divide it by 2. It goes in evenly. You have a 9 left over, and you could write that as 3 squared, or 3 times 3. You got the option there. You use exponents. And then 3 is prime. So we could write that just as, as 3. You could actually write it as 3 times 1. But usually we just left it as 3. And then from that, you could find the least common multiple, or in this case, least common denominator. So what they would tell you is, look at each denominator in the factors form, and write down every different base that appears. So we started at the top with 6. It has a base there of 2 and a 3. Then we go to 4. Base of 2, we already have it, so we don't put it in. 18. Base of 2, we already have it, so we don't put it in. And then 3 squared, base is 3 there, already have it, don't put it in. And then for 3, it's just 3, or 3 times 1, so we leave it. And then you simply would go through there and look at the largest exponent for each base. So 2 has an exponent of 1 in the first factorization, of 2 in the second, of 1 in the third factorization of 18. So the largest base or exponent, let's just say, is 2. So that goes 2. And then for the base of 3, and the first one is 3 to the 1, and the next one doesn't have a 3, so it's 0, zero and then 3 to the second, 3 to the first, so the largest power is 2. So 2 squared times 3 squared is your least common denominator. So you go, okay, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 times 9 is 36. And then they would, the procedure would say, write that answer, and you could write it in factored form, provided it's in this case 36 and then you would simply do this you start with the first fraction and you go 6 into 6 into 36 go 6 and then 6 times 7 is 42 and then bring down the sign what is it minus so put a minus next and then 4 into 36 goes 9 9 times 3 27 bring down your sign plus 18 into 36 goes 2 times, and then 2 times the numerator, 22. Next sign is a plus, and then 3 goes into 36, 12 times, 12 times 1 is 12. And then once you had that down, then you just simply, not, you combine. No, notice, if I write this separately, do it the usual way, this would be 42 over 36, minus 27 over 36, 22 over 36. 12 over 36. But this way we have it all compact here with least common denominator down here. And then we have all the numerators together. And then we just take 42 minus 27 plus 22 plus 12. And this gives me 49. That's over. 
36. And then the last step would be to reduce it. So you would have to show the, the factorization for the 49s. Okay, 7 times 7. And then for 36, 2 squared times 3 squared. And if there's no factors that divide out, you, okay, you can leave your answer in this form. And it's already, that's what we have to do. We have to show all the steps. If you left anything out, the grader for the instructor would, would dock you quite a bit. So it was essential. It was, it was mainly a procedures class. So everything was given in terms of a step-by-step -step procedure. And again, I think they were just, they were just testing us on following procedure. Because if you can't follow procedure, you're going to have issues in, in mathematics, especially the uh, more advanced courses. So we had a uh, whole half semester or so of arithmetic, and then we got into the to the algebra. But we had to do the same the same uh, procedure. So this for this one here, then now this one is pretty much all factored out. So the denominator for the first one is x, for the second one is x minus one, and for the third one is x minus one to the second. So all the different bases that appear that's that's the factorization. But if I was taking that course, I'd have to indicate over here separately, but since I've already pointed it out to you, I'll just say, okay, it's going to be x, one base, x minus 1 is another one, and then the third fraction has an x minus 1 also, so we don't put it. So all, all the different bases are x and x minus 1, and there's only one x, so that's going to be x to the first, and x minus 1 here to the first, and this one is x minus 1 to the second, so this one has to have a, a 2 here, and then we do the same sort of thing. So. There you say, okay, x goes, x divides into this, x cancels, so I get x minus 1 squared, so this would be 2 times x minus 1 squared. I bring down the sign, it's a minus 2, well, it's a minus and then it's a 2, and then x minus 1 divides into the LCD, well, the x, it cancels 1, x is minus 1, so I'm going to have an x left over and 1, x minus 1 left over to the first power. And then on the third fraction, the denominator is x minus 1 to the second. That'll divide the x minus 1 to the second there, leaving with an x. So whatever's left over is what I multiply that uh, numerator. So it's x times 3. Bring down the sign. So that's 3x. So then this is going to equal 2. Then I go to the next step. And what do I have? So this is going to give me 2. And then I go ahead and square this out. x minus 1 squared is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. So I'm just squaring a binomial. So any, any way you want to do that, x minus 1 times x minus 1, or just know the fact that if you have a binomial squared, it's the first term squared, minus or plus, depending on the sign of that middle uh, term, twice the product of x and 1, so in this case minus 2x, plus the second term squared, 1 squared is 1. And then on this one here, I have minus 2x and x minus 1. So here I just distribute here I get minus 2x times x will give me an x minus 2x squared. And minus 2x times a minus 1 is a plus 2x and then plus 3x. So then this is going to equal 2. And I just distribute here. Distributed property 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times the minus 2x is a minus 4x. 2 times 1 is a plus 2. So this product gives me 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. I'm going to have a minus 2x squared to bring down. Minus 2x squared, I just say. And then this is 2x plus 3x. And then it's just a matter of combining like terms. So I've got a 2x squared here, a minus 2x squared here. So that cancels out. And then I've got a 2x and a 3x. That's 5x and a minus 4x is 1x. So this is going to equal 2. So again, 2x and a 3x is 5x. And then minus 4x is 1x or just x. And then I've got left just a plus 2 in the numerator. And then here, I, forget, I kept forgetting my denominator here. So this is x. They would dock me for this. So if I had done this in an actual problem, they probably would have taken enough half credit for that. But i got to carry this down. 
this again this x x minus 1 squared so then I get x plus 2 and then I've got an x in this denominator times x minus 1 squared and of course the last step is to reduce it or simplify it if possible so but you can see the only factor I have in the numerator is x plus 2 the only factors in the denominator are x and x minus 1 two factors of x minus 1 with nothing in common so generally they will, they, they will let us leave the answer in this format. It could, since there's no factors common, I could multiply this x minus 1 by itself because it's squared and then times x and I could give that answer also. But we just leave it in this format here. And that's the simplified answer to this problem. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.